Hey y'all, it's Abroad in a Budget. I'm checking in with you at the end of my final week of this $30 a week spending challenge I have put myself on. For those of you who are watching for the first time, I am living and working in Sweden and I'm kicking off a very big savings goal of having $15,000 saved by June of 2019. So to do that, I decided to really ramp down my weekly spending. Normally, outside of my fixed expenses, I give myself about $120 a week for absolutely everything else. My groceries, entertainment, toiletries, cleaning supplies, clothes, if I have to buy any train tickets, if I want to buy stamps to send mail home to my family. Anything that's not a fixed expense comes out of that $120 a week budget. So I ramped this down to $30 a week in conjunction with forgoing my April vacation and taking the money that I would have spent there, about $1,200, and putting that in savings too. Really trying to get this big push behind this savings goal that I had set out for myself. And as soon as I made that goal, I thought, I need to do something to mark the occasion. So no spend April and staycation April it was. Uh, how did I do? Well, this is the end of the entire month and so this is kind of a final wrap up video, but I also have weekly wrap up videos that you can find here on my channel. So looking at this $30 a week budget, how often did I bust it? The answer is every week. How badly did I bust it? The answer is, well, it varies a lot. So let's just see what happened. So $30 a week, I busted it by $1.40. I went over the first week by less than $2, and that was far and away my best week. I guess I should pause here and say that absolutely, Sweden does not use the American dollar, but I just put it into US dollars because it seems like a lot of people in the frugal budgeting YouTube community are based in America or perhaps... Um, in, in North America, America, or Canada, and so they might be more familiar with the US dollar. Uh, so I just put it into US dollars for ease of reference. The Swedish kroner is not the most easily recognizable currency. I think even if I were using the euro, perhaps um, that would be something that might be a little bit more easily recognizable for people. But Swedish kroner, I'm gonna translate that into American dollars. Uh, so week one, I went $1.40 over my $30 budget. Week two, definitely the worst week. I went $40 over my $30 budget. That was because I was doing my staycation during this time and I had some projects that I had been meaning to attend to, namely the fact that my entire closet fell off the wall and needed to be screwed back into the wall. Or not my closet, but this hanging organizational system. So um, a staycation is the kind of time when I think you should take care of these projects. So I just decided to make a conscious decision to bust my budget. Um, week three, back down to more reasonable numbers of failure. I went $19 over my $30 budget. And then finally, that brings us to this week, week four, where I went $16 over my $30 budget. So I went over my budget every single week. Um, and yet I still consider this to be a great success because then I ran the numbers overall. And I should have spent $120 this week if I had kept religiously to the budget every week and I was able to, to meet my goal perfectly. I should have spent $120. I didn't. I spent $196. So I went $76 over my budget. But that's for the entire month I overspent by $76. So when I look at this number, I should have spent $120, but I spent $196. That is by any metric, objectively, I failed this challenge. But when I compare it to how much I was normally giving myself to spend, which was $480 a month versus 196, then we find a number that is $284 saved. I managed to find almost 300 extra dollars in my budget. And that to me was a great success. So yes, would I have wanted to meet this budget challenge perfectly? Yes, because I'm kind of a high achiever and a little bit um, obsessive about <laughs> doing things the right way. But at the end of the day, to see that I was able to find an extra almost $300 a month in my budget by changing my spending is pretty empowering. So I saved more than half of what I would usually spend, even though I didn't meet the challenge perfectly, not at all. Even the first week, my best week, I went over it. 
But what I gained from this experience and what I think is super important whenever you're doing these challenges is behavior modification, self-reflection, and going forward with good information. Um, and what I've gotten from this is that I can honestly say without any guilt, I did my best. And I think $30 a week in Sweden is just not realistic. I don't think, I think $30 a week, even in America, I used to play the coupon game and do all of that when I was living home. I think even for a single person with no kids and no pets to say, okay, you've paid your rent, cell phone, gym, all your fixed expenses are done. Here's 30 bucks. Deal with your life. That's a lot. Um, it's a lot to ask of $30 to feed you, entertain you, get you places, pay for medicine. I mean, it's just not sustainable. But when I look at how much I went over, I went over by about $76. Let's call it 80 to make the math easy. $20 a week I went over. So perhaps $50 a week is reasonable. Maybe 30 is quite low and too low, really. But the numbers don't lie and they're telling me, okay, well, I guess that's $50 a week. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I live in a super old building and the pipes are just like making weird gurgling sounds. As a child who read it in the fourth grade and was terrified by drains, it's really not the most pleasant sound to hear at 3 a.m., but uh, at 10 a.m. when the sun's shining, I can deal with it. Anyway, sorry, I get distracted. Um, so yeah, I think that I could do something like $50 a week and that would be much more sustainable. The other thing I realized from this challenge is that I'm so jealous of people that have access to the Capital One accounts where you can have like 25 different savings accounts. I have one savings account and I have my checking account. So um, I really wish I had a more clear boundary around my sinking funds because I think the reason I give myself this 120 a week is because I kind of have an ongoing sinking fund so that if someone's birthday comes up, I, I'm always kind of making a running tally like, well, I usually spend about $50 on a birthday between gifts and going out and going out to eat and stuff. Um, so I really need to think about a way to do that. And I'm going to actually go to my bank and see if they have options for um, having subcategories in my checking account. Um, so that was another thing that I took away from this. But overall, I'm feeling really good. Uh, I think this is a great way to kick off this savings challenge. I've been obsessively running the numbers, and I think that everything looks good to meet my goal, even with going home to America this summer, which will be very expensive. If you have been considering doing a savings challenge or a no-spin challenge or any kind of challenge, and you're afraid of doing it because you're afraid you're going to fail, I mean, yeah, you probably will, especially if it's the first time you're doing it, but so what? I always tell my students, um, you know, you try and then you fail and the next time you feel better. And that's not my quote. That was um, someone far more wise than I, whose name escapes me right now, um, presenting this idea of just failing better. So of course, the first time you do something, it might not be that great. You know, maybe now that I've learned some things from this challenge, I could do this again and maybe I could stick to a $30 a week challenge. Who can say? So I think for next week, um, or rather for next month, I'm going to work on $50 a week. And I don't have any more birthdays happening this year. Um, well, there's only one, but I've already budgeted it in. So I think that um, $50 a week would be reasonable. And then I could save myself an extra $200 next month, um, which would be very exciting. Thanks for checking in. If you want to see how this entire project went, you can look through the videos here on my channel. And hopefully the next challenge I do, I'll take this knowledge I learned and apply it there. So uh, thanks again for following along and hopefully you found just a little bit of inspiration from this to do your own challenge. Bye.